Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. So we have a new friend today. This is Kate. She's gonna Hi guys. she's gonna help eat. We're gonna her and Ben are gonna be our my, my sous chefs and comment readers. She's gonna be the one who catch all the comments that Ben is missing. Yes. Ben is coming. Yeah. He's gonna be here in five minutes. Hi everybody. Ben is missing. Yes. Uh, just yeah. No, no, it's okay. Just keep going, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm new to this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, today is a very ambitious show again. Um, we're making flatbread. We're making, hi Cookie. We're making um, two flatbreads. We're making a savory one and a sweet one. Now, before all the questions, this is, by the way, this is an amazing cookbook. It's from Crossroads Kitchen, a vegan restaurant in, uh, uh, where's Sally? Have you been? I have not. It's amazing. Uh, everything that he makes is um, created. All his, um, you know, meat substitute he creates. So you can't find that anywhere in the oh, store. Amazing. So you, and uh, he uses a lot of Kite Hill ricotta. And you go to this restaurant and you don't miss anything meat related. So here is where I find my uh, the recipe for for the dough of the flatbread. I'm gonna just go through it very quickly with you. Um, he makes amazing flatbreads and he uses the kite hill ricotta. They are truly foolproof. I'm not a baker. Um, I only know how to bake my cookies and that's pretty much it. And this is... Well, those this, are pretty great. This is never... Yeah, those are great. <laughs> um, this has never disappointed. So, very briefly, and by the way, it's super quick. This uh, rises in half an hour. I let it rise for three hours just because I had the time, but it doesn't really change. So the, fl the, the dough is basically two cups and three quarters of all-purpose flour, um, one teaspoon of dry yeast, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one cup and two tablespoons of water, warm filtered water, uh, two, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of black pepper that I didn't put this time because I'm gonna do the, same, the, the, the sweet one as well. And that's pretty much it. And um, I, I worked it in the food, in the food, pro, no, it's not the food processor, it's the, what's it called? Mixer. It's the mixer, oh, the, the food mixer, yeah. the kitchen food mixer. And, and, uh, and then, Put it in the bowl with some olive oil and for half an hour. You can freeze this dough. It freezes beautifully. And uh, you can keep it in the fridge for a few days. If you freeze it, you just throw it the night before. And At room temp? Or do you mm -hmm. have to room temperature. But you don't want to shock it, right? No, so that's why. And overnight, it, it becomes, it goes back to the natural splendor. That's amazing. So, anyway, this is... So the flat dough recipe is not mine, but it's Tal Ronan. So if you're in LA, go and try this restaurant. Just a great book. You can pick it if you want. So now, hi guys. We've got lots of people joining us. Welcome. Um, I'm also curious if we have new people. Uh, if you guys are new, um, let, us know. let us know. Welcome. <laughs> um, I feel sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Let me see, I need a uh, kitchen towel. So we are going to make the savory flatbread with this beautiful vegetable that I just discovered last week at the farmer's market. So it's Italian actually, and I never tried it before. It's called spigariello, and it's in the Say family of broccoli. Spigariello. Spigariello. Perfect. Ah, see? Very conversation. Anyone can say it. <laughs> and it's in the family of broccoli. I believe this, I, I think that this is the broccolinis. Broccoli, Le yeah. Leaves. And, yeah. But it doesn't really taste much like broccoli, which I'm happy because I have a complicated relationship with broccoli. <laughs> I like it when I go to a restaurant. I, I can never make, when I'm here, I don't know. I hate the smell. And somehow this vegetable just sauteed, it's delicious. 
We have a new one, right? Welcome, Rhonda. Rhonda! Welcome, Rhonda. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here, for giving us a try. So, Spigariello, we were saying. Skillet, Let's, let me move actually you guys closer to me. So, how was your weekend? Yesterday we kind of started a conversation about the weekend and because uh, you know that I hate Sundays. Um, but yesterday was actually a good Sunday. We went to the museum, Catherine loved LACMA. She keeps saying, she, she loved her LACMA sticker. Mm -hmm. And Metropolis was, wasn't working because we went there late and it closes at four. But, um, it has those beautiful yeah, gardens. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was beautiful. Garden. She loved it. Yeah. I, I, I think it's beautiful to bring, like she would just say, oh, wait, wait, this is something I want to tell you before I start. So I don't chew gum often. Um, yesterday I was chewing gum and it was blue and we are in the museum. It's all silent. And she screams, mama eating Play-Doh. <laughs> Did it turn your tongue blue too? Huh? No. No. No, but it was no. like it was still yeah. close blue. And so I never connected the two things before. And it was so cute. Mama eating Play-Doh. Mama's eating Play-Doh. And I had to tell her not to eat Play-Doh. That, that was something else. You know, so, my mom would actually make her own Play-Doh when I was a kid. Uh -huh. And sometimes she would put cinnamon in it. Ooh. And I wanted to eat it. I tried to uh -huh. eat it. And it was such a shock because it was like, like Play-Doh. Yeah. Like oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, that must be but good. It, with mm -hmm. You can make your own. And I know that some people use essential oils, Ooh, and so you can use, you know, lemon or lavender according to, uh, I, I haven't, I never made Play-Doh. Do you guys, did you guys um, make Play-Doh with your kids? Uh, Mary is asking me why I hate Sundays. I don't know, it's something that I have since I was, a, let me start doing something. Um, it's something that I had something since I was a child. I... Ooh, somebody made slime with their boys. That Ooh. sounds fun. How do you like slime? Stuff, probably. How do you guys make slime? Um, I, so I'm just putting, I'm just removing the, 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 the hardest part of the stem, but I'm basically sauteing all of it. I'll show you now. So, um, no, I don't know why I hate Sundays. I, it's, it, it gives me a lot of anxiety and I feel depressed. And I don't know, it's something that I had. Since I was a child, I never liked it. My father would spend Sundays in, in the garage where he would like fix, you know, wood or he, li he, likes to work, he likes to work with wood and he would listen to the soccer games. So I have this memory of soccer games, which is a very tiny thing to do on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, he would play the Skedina, which is it's kind of a lottery, but where you try to guess the, the, the team that is going to win that day. So every Italian, basically, it's a very, I mean, I don't know nowadays, but every Italian kind of spends Sundays like that. And so I don't know. I don't know why. And it never went away. Mm -hmm. I still, I, and I don't love holidays. I think that there's something reassuring to me about the activity of the week. You know, that people are out, people are doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, I struggle with Do you like Mondays? I love Mondays, mm -hmm. and also because I struggle with relaxing. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at just chilling and reading a book. So I feel like Sunday is a forced, I don't know. It's very, I think it's one of those things that are very ingrained from when you were a child because I have beautiful Sundays these days, especially with Catherine. Um, we miss Elise during the weekend. <laughs> Um, what about you guys? I know that it's not a, it's not uncommon. So can you read if they are telling mm -hmm. me whether they like Sundays we're or so, not? We're talking about Play-Doh oh, and, and also the slime. slime. Right? I don't know about the slime. <laughs> yes. Who made slime? Um, somebody made some slime. I, yeah, I think you use like Elmer's glue or something. Um, Is it glue? No. Barnes. Um, yeah, and then you add food coloring. You can make it whatever color you want. And yes, um, the Becker mom says, yes, Sundays equal work week. Huh, see? Saturdays, yeah. What about you? Do you I like call Sundays? them the Sunday scaries. I always feel like, because I love Mondays, but Sundays it's like, you have to force yourself to relax because you're yeah. anticipating, and yeah. I feel like the pressure has it's something like, to do with it. It's like New Year's, New Year's yeah. Eve, you're supposed to have fun. And yes, then... yes. You know, like, <laughs> we said that, you know, there's all this pressure about what are you doing. I know. <laughs> Saturdays don't bother me. 
No, but there's Maybe some because Sunday is coming, and you know that. Yeah, <laughs> and, but also because people are still doing things. Like there's something about people. Are, I don't know. The TVs yeah. are open. People. I don't. My Sundays are always better if I have a good hike, or I yeah. do some yoga or something. I like, don't hike enough. We have so many pretty mountains around. I us. know. I don't. I don't hike enough. Do you guys? What do you do in nature? What's your favorite? Because I know that we have a lot of uh, followers from Florida, mm -hmm. so I'm sure they have a beautiful beach. Um, here we're done with this. Oh, sorry. Cookie Groover goes to the Botanical Garden. That's a great activity. Near us, we have Huntington and I'm, saute I'm sauteing this, okay? With just some olive oil, and um, and I'm gonna add some chili flakes. I'm not chili flakes, can you give me the salt flakes, please? Yes. Um, and uh, so yeah, I just want to tell you what I'm doing and then uh, we thank you mm -hmm. We'll get to the fun part of the of Decorating our flatbread. So let me see Our Sunday was a little unconventional. I had to take my boyfriend to the emergency. Oh, oh, no. oh I'm sorry But he's on the mend She's in. We said our love Beaches, Randa, yes. beaches, yes. Beaches are a great Sunday activity. I was at the beach last week and we saw dolphins swim by. Oh, so oh yeah, you told me that, happened. right, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Someone was in Gainesville. Cookie, oh no, Leslie was in Gainesville. I miss Gainesville, I love it. I, we haven't been there in a, in a long time. Ben is from Gainesville, that's why. So oh. let me, uh, no, what am I doing? Yeah, let me cut the tomatoes. That's nice. So here I have... A fresh tomato. This is if, uh, yeah, in a, in a little bit, like okay. here. Actually, use it because I don't have tongs. I'm using capris. <laughs> and see, I didn't really do much to these. I just left them very simple, very na na natural. Um, and also, there's a lot, and I think I'm gonna use some of them just as a side. These are welcome, Ben Montage. Let's go to Gainesville instead of Italy. <laughs> um, so this is the second chance tomato that we talked about on Sunday at the farmer's market. Did you see the video by any chance from the farmer's yeah, market? Yes. So yeah, this is the second These chance. These are the guys that are, don't look so good. No, but they But are, they taste amazing. Yeah, yeah. Extra sweet. Yep. And also. They look super nice and medium. And this, uh, I didn't know this farm is in uh, the Coachella Valley. So for this is their, their time to have tomatoes. They only have tomatoes and mangoes. So, because you know, this is not really tomato season. I think you really have to go to the desert to have a summer weather that is not, all, you know, too, um, too hot. So I'm, uh, I'm just gonna put some fresh tomatoes on top of our flatbread of the savory one. Um, let me see, Randa, love, mm -hmm. love living in Gainesville. Oh, we have people living yes. in Gainesville. And Diane. And the Tom the... Petty weekend in October. Did you go? I didn't. She said it's to go. Oh, she, okay. Yeah. Gainesville is such a lovely, lovely. Um, can you stir it again? Is this a walk? Huh? Is this a walk? What? Somebody asked if this is a walk that we're using here. It's no, a it's, a, it's just a all clad saute pin. Mm, it smells that... really nice. Let's see, if you use this, it doesn't smell like farts. <laughs> Broccoli always smells like fart. I know, that's why I'm, I'll actually, I always have to, um, uh, yeah, bro, I, I'm a weird cook because I'm very sensitive to smells, so. Yeah, I, don't good cook. Like I feel like a good cook has to have a wonderful sense of smell. No, but I don't know if it's wonderful, I'm just bothered by it, so <laughs> I'm like, I love onions, but I hate to cook onions because they smell, they, I, they, then the entire house smells and. You know, I have candles, but um, mm, yeah. this is, is a, you know, it's a yeah. mix between kale. I think it is a mix between kale and broccoli. Yeah, that's the, it's nutty. It has it's almost nutty, like a... And it stays very crunchy, which mm. I love. Ben and Alice, the Betty Wigan October in Gainesville. It's too big now, my landmarks are gone. Welcome, Ben. Yeah, I'm gonna go close the doors to it. Yes, please. Ben is going to go upstairs and close the doors to the, the other rooms because um, otherwise Catherine is going to sleep with, um. that, with broccoli uh, scent. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, even the smell is different, right? It's yeah. not just broccoli. 
smells very good. Almost like, yeah, when you roast zucchini or something. It's, it's very, very, nice. very interesting vegetable, yeah. So, and um, the taste, it's different than broccoli? It is. It doesn't really taste like, it has a hint of broccoli, but it's really an in-between kale and broccoli, but it doesn't taste it's like tougher. either. Doesn't make sense. Um, so before actually we go into any other conversation, I want to thank you all for... Um, Pretty Tom Petty says, hey. Hi, Pretty Tom Petty. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you all for uh, the last week's when I um, posted about that rough day. Um, it really helped. And I, I really, it was really difficult to actually film myself making cookies, but it, it kind of really got me out of that, you know, self pity thing, you know, people don't care about me, I'm never going to get there, and uh, it really helped, and you guys, truly, you were amazing, you really made me feel, you, you really helped immensely, and I, you know, when I talk about, when I talk to, like, either agencies or people, and I talk about this beautiful community that we have built, I always... I kind of forget that, not forget, but I take for granted that the community is actually for me as well. It's not just creating it for you guys, but it's, that's why I started in the first place because it makes me feel better. And um, so it's not just, I create something for you. We kind of create something for each other. And I think that it's lovely and so rare in social. That's the beauty of social media. I think that social media has a lot to offer if we use it wisely. And um, Shala33 says, we love you, Aliche, and I agree. <laughs> okay, so we have okay, the tomatoes. So this these. is a still... How are these um, doing? They took a little bit. The, you know, the thing there. with the... Because I noticed that I ruined my first all clad. And by the way, not an ad. I wish it was an ad. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not an ad. But I ruined my first one because the... Um, it's true that they, they're very resistant, but I think that I use it too, um, too high heat. And it burned, and it kind of burned the. So it's not shiny and beautiful. And I really like to have my pots and skillets shiny as they were new. And so here we have our tomato. What I'm gonna do now? I'm going it's to turning greener. Yeah, which is weird. Beautiful no, which color. is weird because broccoli. Mm -hmm. The more you cook it, and the more it becomes brown. Yeah. Um, now, question: What is your relationship with broccoli, guys? It's a good one. Hmm. It's an existential question, I guess. It's an um, atmospheric question. What about you two? What's your relation with broccoli? I like broccolini. I like it roasted in the oven. Um, broccolini is, yeah. It's different because you get the leaves and yes. um, the little right? flowers get that crispiness yeah. on it. But yeah, regular old broccoli. I don't know, it just reminds me of being a kid and having to eat your greens on yeah. your plate. And, <laughs> but sometimes you can make, like, there are some broccoli, like, if you go to a restaurant, sometimes they're steamed at the right point where it's crunchy and yes, actually really nice, that's the best. but you have to not cross the line because it goes from crunchy to, um, by the way, this is cheddar, white cheddar, okay? Ben wanted me to tell you that it was white and not orange because Ben is not a fan of cheddar, I hear. Ben, well, we have some definite broccoli fans. Orange we do? cheddar. We mm do. -hmm. I think you can also make a lot of like there the are. The right orange cheddar is good, but it's hard to get. You it. asked me to get no. Why? I was a Trader Joe's today. No. And you it, asked me to it, get the I'd white one. I'd rather have this. I'd rather. Okay. Have... The reason why we're doing cheddar is because when I I made this um, flatbread this past week, I was just experimenting with spigarello, and and I thought, hmm, broccoli. I'm gonna add cheddar and I'm gonna make a play on the on a, on broccoli. Oh my God, Steve! Steve Naive connected. Steve, what an honor to have you. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to. Ooh, cream of broccoli soup. That is. You know, good. that's the thing. I wanted to create a game on on broccoli and cheddar. That's super cheesy. That <laughs> there's so much cheese that you don't even yes. realize that you're eating broccoli. Um, and it I think it's the name of broccoli. You always have to cover mm -hmm. it up with cheese or bran or something else. And this yeah. is great. This is looking good. What is Brasico Olachea? Is that the scientific name of broccoli? I must it may be. Mm. Uh, you know how I like broccoli? That my mom makes this amazing um, pasta al forno, like a uh, oven, oven broiled pasta with bechamel and broccoli. 
Ooh. And that's, but again, it's covered with bechamel. So yes. anything covered with <laughs> bechamel. Bechamel is delicious. Yes. And I've already flipped these all over the place. Oh, my tour bus. This makes me so happy. When are you coming back? We don't know if we're gonna come. Come back? Yeah, come Steve. Here, from where? Steve is on a tour bus. Steve, come this way. <laughs> Steve, come this way. Come here, come here, come here. Come over here, come over here right now. Excuse me. I'm gonna take over. Steve, come back, come back. I beseech you, Steve come back. Steve is a dear friend of ours, and uh, he was just here um, with his, um, with this um, wife. And his lovely lady. His lovely, um, the magnificent Muriel. Yeah, the magnificent Muriel. Thank God I wish you guys lived here. Um, is that Dr. Brassica Is it that, is it the... Instagram says that's doctor. Hmm. You know what it would be cool? If you guys all lived close and we could have this dinner in like real time. Wouldn't mm. it be amazing? We should have probably a gathering somewhere. Once a year. Gainesville. Gainesville. <laughs> Gainesville. Cookies but we should have, it would be so cool to meet you all and have, we can have like one of those communal tables and, hey, and all. That would be so fun. Oh my God. Let me try. Hmm. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay. You need to try. This is amazing. Can, uh, uh, how do we, uh, mm. I think the salt is perfect. And uh -huh. you don't even have to cook these too much because they're going to cook in the oven with the flatbread. This is really pretty. Mm. Right? It's so it's good. It's so simple. That's you so don't, sweet. you know, there's nothing here. Now, it's like it caramelized. It's what amazing. does the process do to it? It's just, I saute everything before mm -hmm. using it because I think that the saute... It like shocks it, right? It and so it, it releases it sugar. Wilts the, and yeah, and it wilts the, just the leaves to the point of being... And <laughs> it's so good. Now, mm. I, I know that uh, we are lucky that we live in California and we have produce all year long. Um, kind of. So if you can't find this... Alice could cook for all of us. Yes, but you yes. guys have to help me because... Uh, but so if you can't find this, I would say that spinach is great on for this flatbread. And you can maybe have spinach and uh, goat cheese. On, or you can have kale and gorgonzola cheese. Ooh, I love gorgonzola. Yeah. Kale and gorgonzola cheese. You can have kale and anything. Like, um, Probably mm -hmm. kale is the closest in, ter in terms yeah. of texture. It has to be tough. Yeah, because spinach can be a little watery. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, you get a lot of water yeah. with spinach. So spinach. kale, I think, is the best. Um, oh, my love. So, let me, let's me let start. Now, right. I'll show you this. Move my phone out of the way. Uh, so we may, have, we may need a little bit more, um, I don't know, we may need a little bit more cheese. Now, this flatbread is so good that you can easily just put some olive oil and sea salt, put it in the oven for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and you have, you're gonna have this crunchy, lovely uh, bread soup substitute. Alice and 50 sous chefs, sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, let's discuss. So, this makes four big, what is this, how many inches? I don't know, it looks like about a foot. A foot? It's yeah. so weird to have 12 a, foot, inches? A, foot, a foot long a <laughs> flat bread. I think it's a foot long flat So, 12 inches? 12 inches. I would say it makes four. I don't know, you keep moving your hands. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, 10, 12. 10, 12, 12 inches. inches flat bread, okay? Uh, I'll see. What I'm going to do, since I want to give Kate part of it, part is going to be our dinner. I want Catherine to eat it, hopefully. So, I'm going to make three big savory flat bread and two small sweet ones. Um, Do you peel and seed your tomatoes? No. No. Not, not no, with, they're just all in here. And you know, look, I noticed with the, the tomatoes that you got, because so many of the ones at the regular grocery store are like super seedy. Uh -huh, and this they is have not, that, right? like, the guts. This is like nothing. It's all meat. It's amazing. I know. So let me see. Um, two small ones. So what you do here usually, let me see. What you do here, uh, you can uh, freeze whatever you don't use. So oil a little, either um, Ziploc bag. Um, I don't use plastic anymore, so I just put it in a container, like a Tupperware, and oil, very well oiled, and put it in the fridge or the freezer. Now, I'm gonna, look at this though. It's, 
it makes you just want to eat. It looks so chewy and you just want to eat it. Mm. Um, let me, can you hold this one? Yes. I'm going to move this here so they can actually see me. Oops. Okay. This can be here. I don't know. Yeah. Very precarious, yeah. That doesn't look like it's going to No, it doesn't. Your, so, it actually, you can't see me. Your ring is okay. right here, you know. You almost set it on your ring. Ben um, is very careful to... Okay, so he proposed. <laughs> I'm more careful. He proposed on our me. fifth wedding anniversary. And uh, and now he checks whether I'm wearing the ring or not. <laughs> but when I cook, I don't, don't want to wear it. I don't check. You never wear your rings. <laughs> It's a beautiful ring. It is a beautiful ring. Do you guys ring. want to see the ring? Wow, we've got oily hands. We'll show you. You know that, I'll tell you this, I, I, when I posted the photo of Ben um, proposing, I didn't even show the ring. And after like an hour, Instagram started showing me images of a ring, <laughs> ring. engagement rings or They're people listening. proposing. They're a little late though. He had yeah. given me the ring already. They should have done yeah. it before. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so this is the size of the of the savory. I'll show you now. I like it very thin. And so what you do, do you see what I'm doing with my hands? You don't roll it with a rolling pin. You actually, I don't think actually you're it's supposed like, to roll you pizza. Just play the piano. Yeah, play the piano on it. <laughs> there you go. Um, I don't think you're supposed to pl to roll the dough, pizza dough. I think it's kind of goes against the rules, but don't well, yeah, call me that. Yeah, that's why you that. always see the guys throwing yeah, it up, but you can't a, throw it in you know, the air. It's art. That's really art. Yes. So, um, but don't quote me on that. If there's some pizzaioli among you, you can correct me. Uh, I tried once. It stuck to the ceiling. It was a mess. You tried? <laughs> yeah. I have never tried. So this is the first one. What do you hold? Oh, you're holding. Oh, sorry. I'm holding I'm sorry. this one. I should have, uh, I don't really remember, remember. Let's Next start with the putting the... You want to do the savory first? Yeah, also because I want to put this, the savory in the oven. Mm -hmm. And then we can focus on the... On the... So I'm going to start with the cheddar. Somebody is asking, do you practice good food safety guidelines when you cook? Um... In the sense that... <laughs> you uh, well, sure that we don't die of I don't, Well, I don't eat meat. So that's a big one. that's a big one. I don't eat fish. I don't really cook. and I eat it sometimes if I go to a restaurant. So I don't cook fish. So I guess I just wash the stuff a lot and mm -hmm. wash my hands a lot. Um, I think that after it, and eggs, of course, I wash you know after trying not to eat raw eggs and but that's pretty much it. Am I doing enough? If I'm not, please tell me because <laughs> now is I have a little one to take care of. Um, Am I doing enough, you guys? Something we're with... still alive. We're still alive. Okay, so um, you can be as generous as you can with the cheese. I try not to put too much because I still want this a healthy thing. And too much cheese can. Um, now, get me the salt. The other salt. The other salt. Yes. Um, thank you. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of salt on the. Not too much because actually this was. Yeah. This we was put right. Some... Yeah. Uh, now, I want to show you what I'm doing here. Yes, I'm going to use. Some, I'm going to cut these with a with a um, scissor, with a scissor, with a pair of scissors. Steve just informed us that spinach is Persian. Really? Mm -hmm. I never knew that. Nope. Steve is a learned man. So, so many professor okay. Steve naive. <laughs> There's um, well, you know, like tomatoes are in so many Italian recipes, but, we, but they you know, come from the New yeah. World. Yeah, so imagine like Italian cuisines, they didn't have tomatoes for... Didn't they use anchovies and stuff back in the day? We use a... We, yeah, and actually, still do, but anchovies, like, anchovies is still... You should mention the humble anchovy. <laughs> you know, yes. Ben loves anchovies. Actually, this... Oh, you know what? We can put this on one to try that anchovy oil that I got from Italy. Okay. Did right? you know that the reason, the strong taste associated with um, anchovies is part of the curing process and the natural anchovy, which is known in Italy as the alice, alice. Al uh, which means Alice, yeah. um, alice the natural anchovy. anchovy has a much milder flavor. Well, in fact, when you eat it fresh, it's a completely different That's what it is flavor. Yeah. <laughs> 
Best so Philip space. says you're in your house. Who cares about food safety? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right with the, you know, what we cook with. It's all tomatoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah tomatoes. Hey, you can see these guys. There's none of that slimy oh, oh, guts. Oh, um, Squeeze a lot of anchovies to get this stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? That since um, I don't want to run out of time, and I can just make one, and then Ben, you and I can make ours later for dinner, okay? Because then, so we can, I don't want to try one. Rush well, things. This, is, this, rush is, the, this is the one that we're going to all try here with Kate and, uh, and Elise, hopefully. Um, I think that's, that's beautiful. I think that's it. We don't need, I'm going to, I don't think we need anything else. This is what we did last time, right, Ben? It was just cheddar and, and brook and... God, I really wish you could all try this really vegetable recall, eh? because it's. I thought it was good. It's, it's really, really good. Right? I just want to eat it straight. I know, out of the pan. I know. It's and really it's just yummy. like the broccolini. When I make the broccolini, I just grill them on the on a little grill mm -hmm. with some salt and um, lemon zest. Yeah. And I just want to eat them like like um, like chips. Mhm. Mm yeah, because the process it kind of candies it. Yeah. And no. even those, you can just saute them or or grill them for. Two or three minutes. They don't mm -hmm. need to because if you pass right. that line, I'm just gonna put some oil on the borders. You can be more professional, and if you have a brush, you can do it with a brush. But I just noted that the borders tend to um, become a little dry. Now this is gonna cook for ten minutes in uh, in a 450 degrees. Just check after ten minutes. Um, I like it after 15, a little bit burned, but since Catherine is eating it, I want something slightly softer. So I'm gonna go with the um, Less time. 10 minutes. And then 10 we can minutes. check. So, and I'm going to use the timer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 4.50, fingers crossed, Ugh. gone. Now, let's work on the two small ones. Um, the sweet ones? The sweet ones, yes. Mm. Let me find the two smallest. Now, today I found Manuka honey at uh, Trader Joe's. Again, not an ad, but if Trader Joe's wants to sponsor this, I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. I'm going to this use right. this one. Uh, I never made this. We actually we made it together once. Let me use the timer. Do you remember, guys, that when we made the American pizza, when I became a citizen, we made the American pizza, and I used the flatbread dough, and there was some leftover flatbread, so I made a, a play on 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 um, strudel. So I I prepared the flatbread, and I had sautéed some apples with butter and sugar. So I put the apples, and then there was some like pecans or, or uh, walnuts, I don't remember, some butter and some sugar on top, so it caramelized, and it became this beautiful. Oh, yeah. It was very healthy, very, mm -hmm. but it was, and it was not too sweet because the, the flat bread is not sweet, and it was really delicious. So I want to go one step further and play with chocolate and with honey and with orange. So... He's got a plug for Italy in, uh, in L.A. What do you mean a plug? He said Italy in L.A. is expensive, but really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, you know, Italy everywhere is expensive. You know, Italy comes... Actually, Italy was born in Torino, where I'm from. Italy. And even, Make sure you say Italy. Italy. And even there is expensive. And I think that some things, especially here in the United States, are really, really expensive and overpriced. However, the philosophy that they have... And the products that they have is really exceptional. Have you ever been to the one in LA? I haven't. No. Have you been to the one in New York or mm -hmm. Chicago? It's worth, you know, the the dinner, the meal is not necessarily them more expensive than a restaurant. Um, the, the the food, I find a little pricey. The one in Chicago, I think that who said that? Um, uh, Anna, Anna, Anna. Yeah, the one in Chicago is the one where when I was pregnant, you know, the band was touring and we spent a long time in Chicago and we basically ate there all the time, almost every night. Do you remember, babe, that crab, mm -hmm. there was this pasta, black, like, Fantastic. black kid, um, that pasta. That was too rich though, it was too rich. It was so good. But, but I was, was pregnant. Rich. That's so. true. 
It's funny what you could eat and not eat when you were pregnant. I know. I know you miss being pregnant, but that part I don't miss. I miss being pregnant, miss. but I don't miss being sick. So I never been to the one in Milan. Um, now, I never been to the one in Turin. It's so maybe we can go, Ben, when we go to Italy, try Italy in uh, in Turin. If we go to Italy, you know, we should buy. If we go to Italy, we got to stock up on a lot of stuff at Italy. In Torino, I actually because they're going to put us in bloody detention camp for a you know I actually order I ordered a bunch of stuff from the from that Italian store Bella Italia so we will have all the fette biscottate and crackers and all the tapenade tapenade I have bought tons of strawberries from from a fundraiser any suggestions on how to make with them before they spoil okay so yeah they spoil very quickly. I think that, did you, were you here last week? We, no, two weeks ago with Erica. We made a dessert with ricotta and strawberries and coconut flakes. Oh, and it was amazing. Uh, you know how I like strawberries? Slice those beautiful strawberries and um, put some vanilla ice cream on top. That's, mm -hmm. to me, that's my favorite way of having strawberries, even more than whipped cream. A plain vanilla ice cream, Vanilla bean ice cream, if you can, the one with the, the good vanilla ice cream where you can really see the beans and taste the beans. Um, when they're fresh, there's no better way of tasting a uh, fruit or a vegetable than as natural as you can. Uh, I see Rhonda saying strawberry shortcake, absolutely. But if they're really fresh, I love st a strawberry shortcake, by the way. If they're fresh, it's magical to have that strawberry. And actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got some here. This is not, oops, this is not really food safety. Mmm. Mmm. Shelley Saffold says our strawberry festival is going on now. Where do you live? Where do you live? amazing. It's March. <laughs> oh, thank mm -hmm. you. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we all look. Oh, in I think that we all look beautiful. I really do. Particularly me. Particularly Ben. He's mm -hmm. also very humble. So <laughs> now. I'm oh, the most we need to hurry. Guy. We need to hurry, hurry, yes. hurry. Okay, so, so what are you doing? I'm. I'm. I think that the first one I want to work with is um, manuka honey and uh, and chopped pecans. Okay. And the, or chocolate and orange. What do you prefer? Um, start with the manuka honey since it's in your hand. I'm wondering, have you cooked honey before? Oh, wait. Guys, it's, I'm late. I'm running late here. Do you cook honey? Did you cook honey before? Yes, why not? Can you uh -huh. put honey in the food? I never have. Well, you because know what? Some, We're going to do it. Some I think say it's that if you cook honey, it becomes cyanide. What? Some say that. No, wait a second. You know Who those, you know those some who say <laughs> so many things? Oh, my God, this is so good. Mm. But you know what? Let's start with the chocolate. Now, okay, we'll do what do you think of putting some, a layer of um, orange yes. marmalade and then the chocolate, yes. dark chocolate on top? Mm -hmm. Let's try it? Yes. Are we, what yes. are we doing with the chocolate? Are we crumbling it? Can I help the with that? Yeah, actually, yes. Um, yes, the Greeks cook honey all the time. It's okay. True. Uh, so so I think, yeah, here. right. Yeah, also because Ben, when you have, um, when you have, um, can I bring this When you have baklava. Well, let me give you this. All sorts of things. Do you know what? It's, it's just much. Um, oh, there we go. That's a little. Here. So, because uh, I didn't realize that we're learning late again. Damn. So let's start. Yeah, if you do that, I'm gonna start with the honey, and then yeah, baklava. How good is baklava, guys? Teresa oh. informed us that the Greeks cook with it all the time, and yeah. that's because Teresa would know being Greek. So yeah. But, hi Teresa. Oh, yeah. Hi Teresa. Okay, guys, I just made a mess here. <laughs> I just made a mess. But can you imagine the taste of, of um, chop? And what would you like me to God, do with it's super this late. chocolate? Just, uh, just very finely. Uh, uh, even like, crumble yeah, or crumble? Crumble, crumble, yeah. With my hand? Yes. Okay. That's, That's the best way. Hand. It's the easiest. I agree. Sometimes I even mix my cookies with my hands. I love to work with it. You know, you know, I really like. I mean, you get to lick your fingers when you're done. Yeah. In just a few minutes. Yeah. This whole kitchen late. will be spilled. Will be filled with the combined smells of broccoli, <laughs> chocolate. No, we established it's not honey. broccoli. It's not broccoli. It doesn't smell it's like so broccoli. Good. It doesn't. No, not really. I don't know where you were when I walked into the kitchen. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> 
It disseminates with the eau de broccoli. <laughs> eau de broccoli. Lovely. Okay. We're mm. so close to Man, it. it's so good, it's guys. Garlic here. It's worth every cent. But the reason I, why I bought it today is that it was cheaper. Nope. Yep. Peppy says if you heat the honey, it spreads much easier. If you what? Well, that's true. If oh, you... right. Guys, I'm not a chef. <laughs> Thank you. Vess Philip is a chef and a fan of heartbreakers and a pianist. Holy moly. Trifecta. Yeah. He'd be able to do the finger technique on this dough. <laughs> So let's chop the, the pecans. You can use anything. Walnuts probably are gonna be amazing too. That's what I had. I'm, I'm really working on this challenge of, um, of using what I have in my pantry before buying anything new, unless I really need it. Like today I bought the chocolate because I thought I had it and I was wrong. And in this house it's kind of a crime to be out of chocolate. So, uh, yeah, but I'm really trying to, even when I make dinner, I try to use only things that I have in the fridge or in the pantry. And it's really fun, challenging, and it makes me feel really good about not wasting and not just buying things when I feel like depressed and I want to buy stuff. And I'm doing the same with everything, like with hair, I mean, not with shoes or purses, but I do the same with um, products. Like I don't buy... There were times when my shower was full of half empty, half full shampoos, just because one day I felt like, oh, I want a new shampoo. And no, I don't like it. So I'm doing this thing of use everything you have and then you can buy something else. Well, and then you get to come up with inventing new things. Yeah, absolutely. And also it makes, it's not just, it's just, it's both for the money, but it's actually, it's, I don't want to just buy things because I feel something missing, you know? Hey babe, yes. Steve just said that cookery is music with taste buds. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I think it needs a few more minutes. So say that again, love. Steve just said that cookery or cooking is music with taste buds. Yeah. I like it, that. I love it. It works. Okay, You're putting me to shame here, Naive. Where are you, Steve? He's on the tour bus. I know, but where? in England. Oh, in England. I believe they're in England. Oh, we're They may be in Scotland or Wales. I'm not really sure. Where are you, Steve? Okay, here is our honey. You're outside and, uh, Nottingham, I know. Let it go and says, check the flatbread in the oven. Ah, I the timer. Point. Yeah, I, need, I, I, no, 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 I know the timer. I need to actually time this because um, I need to put another. Why, why am I always late? Tell me, why am I always late, you guys? You, well, you did say you liked it crispy, so maybe we'll I get know, the crispy version. I, I know, I'm going to take it out now in a second. I said that I needed some more time. So this is the, I need to light, to prepare the other flat bread. You guys, my, why am I always late? Tell me, uh, why do I always run late? And why doesn't Instagram allow me to have a, an hour and 10 minute show? <laughs> now, because these are going to really struggle to cook. Uh, well, we know that we have the broccoli one. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we doing here? We're doing marmalade and... Uh, so, you know, spread it very well. How's this? Perfect. Oh yeah, no, 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 it's perfect. Perfect. Fantastic, thank you. And then I'm gonna you guys all heard that, right? It was perfect. <laughs> it's actually, it's perfect. Um, and the size, do you, do you not have to worry about it too much because it melts? No, or? it melts. I mean, I hope it does. <laughs> well, that is the thing with dark chocolate, sometimes it's it doesn't not melt. as melty. I don't know what, nice. I think less cocoa butter or something. I just didn't want to use, because you know, often in Italy you have Nutella pizza. I just didn't want to use Nutella, I wanted to use... This is going to be so much Nutella. better. Huh? I know, I love Nutella. But chocolate's better. Okay, so this is, I wish. Have you ever thought about prepping more so you would have longer to chat with us? It's the suspense that makes the show. Mm -hmm. I know, but it also, if I prep too much, then they don't see me cooking. So I'm gonna spread some um, orange marmalade here. And then we're gonna just put the 
chop at the cake. Oh, no, I think that we have to take this out. Fantastic. Ooh, you guys. Is that? Is it good? No, it's perfect. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's bottled up in the middle. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. So let's use our hands and then let's hope for the best. Okay. On this. Baby, you've got plenty of time. No, this is to cook, my love. How long does it have to cook for? 10 minutes. Okay, you got 15. Right. <laughs> Throw it in there. We need to eat. I get to eat this tonight. <laughs> I am so Love happy. You. And you do too, Kate. I do you too, to take yeah. Home. Okay, the whole reason why I'm here. <laughs> do you mind putting the chocolate yep. in it? Ooh, ooh. I and love chocolate anymore. And on purpose, I'm not go I'm not um adding add, uh, added sugar because I want this kind of half and I think it's plenty, no? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Let's try. That's smaller, so I think the 10 minutes mm -hmm. is gonna be fine. Now, let's put the, is that good chocolate, right? Mm-hmm. 10 minutes. Fingers crossed. Now, let, do you wanna do, do you wanna try this? Let me yeah. see you guys. Sorry, I don't, I don't, do I not chat with you enough? I just want you to see what I do. You know what? I just realized that this is the, this thing is not recording. Oh, Instagram no, says just you turn the what? oven all the way up. Things come Let faster that way, right? <laughs> just so. turn the oven all the way up. Things come faster that way, The politics in Italy. Right? Oh, ben is talking politics. I'm not. Somebody said everything is better in Italy. No, the politics are not. <laughs> no, so, no. Somebody said that. Um, somebody said that something was so much better. Nutella in Italy is different and better than what we get in the U.S. I said, everything in Italy is better except the politics are the same. Interesting about Nutella. You know, um, does it surprise me? I was hoping that Nutella would... I, think, I wonder if it's like, you know, how Coca-Cola is different in some yes. countries because they yes. use cane sugar in here and corn yeah. syrup. Yeah. yeah. And also, be. there was a... Um, I was listening on NPR a few days ago, two weeks ago. They were talking about... Nutella is supposed to have hazelnuts that come from Italy, and they were they were actually they've been caught using hazelnuts that come from child labor in Turkey, and so Italy apparently has been very restrictive with this. So I don't know if the laws are different. I don't know how it works, but um, anyway, ah, <laughs> with 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 Kate, we were talking about aprons before the show, like. She yeah. noticed that I never use an apron. He never uses an apron. Ben also knows that I never use an apron because then I complain when I stain. <laughs> I have to. I'm always drunk. But I find that sometimes I put the apron on and then the food lands the one spot the apron know, isn't know, covering. <laughs> so, just Ooh. give up. Ooh. Ooh. Alice, come on. Now. <laughs> ben, would yes, you like to come on camera and try this? Just a moment. Mm. Like Clever Susie asked uh, Minnesota primary tomorrow, um, who do I pick? And I said, follow your heart, but make it Warren or Sanders. <laughs> Pet okay, no Kate. Mm. My manners. What has happened to my. Okay. It's the moment of truth. Come here. No, I need it off camera. Oh, well, camera, camera. Because you, well, if it's good, if it's not good, you're not gonna let them know. No, I, I'm going to. Somebody taste wrote it. me. Somebody commented on the video that I recorded of you eating farinata and, and saying, "Ah, oh, not your best." And they said, "You ask him to tell All you right. the truth, and then you complain." Are you ready? This is fantastic. Mm. I'm gonna get the salt. No, I'm kidding. Always <laughs> a little it's bit amazing. More salt. A little bit more salt. Mm. This is fantastic. And you know I wouldn't like you because I don't always say that. No, but that's, that's coarse. I don't know. I'm pretty coarse. It needs some salt, but it's actually yeah. really good. Mm. It needs a little mm -hmm. bit of salt, but it only needs a little mm. bit of salt. And it's really fantastic. You know what so I love? If you're playing the home game. I love that the tomato is not overcooked. So you still have the freshness of the tomato when you... Yeah. It's because fantastic. It's just 10 minutes. It's... Yeah, it's just um, wilted. And so you still have that sweet... It's fantastic. Mm. This is really good. Oh, great. And you know what? It's also a very smart way of mm. having kids eat vegetables. Catherine ate the bread loaded with spinach the other day. And today I want to try to give her this and see if she likes it. But 
it's also a fun way to eat your vegetables because you can actually top this with anything. Like you can even top it with bok choy and um, feta cheese or I don't know, radicchio, mm. radicchio and gorgonzola. You can have so many ways. Like I uh, often follow the Talronan recipe and I use um, kite hill ricotta with butternut squash and caramelized shallot. Mm. And the and the kite hill ricotta is very tangy, 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 yeah. Um, so you have the, it's all about layering the flavors to me and the textures. And here you have the chewiness of the dough and the, you have the dough that is half chewy and half crunch. Then you have the cheese. Then you have this charred crunchy of the vegetables. And then you have the sweet semi raw of the tomato. And it kind of all, because mm -hmm. I know, I want to take this actually, because it's melting. <laughs> um, I know yeah. it's um, no. I think I think these tomatoes make it, guys. If you can find farmers market tomatoes, or sometimes the um, what are they called? The heirloom tomatoes are yeah, yeah, medium. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Like I don't know. Like when I get the like gelatin and mm. gut stuff, it's just like. Ooh. But look at these. They're not, they're really ugly. They're full of marks and uh, and they're very ripe. By the way, I need to use them. Look at this. You cut this part, and you have a perfectly. You know, people, mm -hmm. I think there was a documentary that we're talking about how people are mm. obsessed with eating pretty fruit. So they actually waste so much vegetables and fruit at the source. Like when the farmers doing the crop. Can I have some more? No, wait a second. This is for cotton. There's plenty of us. Mm. <laughs> so they don't even sell the produce that is not pretty to the stores because they know that people are not going to eat it. And I think I told you this story. Last year, I, I wanted to buy peaches. I was at Whole Foods. And I asked the guy, and I saw this guy that was taking them off the shelf and replacing them. And I said, I was touching them and I was smelling them. And one of the ways to know whether a peach is good, it doesn't have to smell like peach through the, to the skin. Same thing for the tomato. If the tomato smells like tomato from the skin. So I asked him if I could have the ones that he was, you know, taking off the shelf. And he told me that he couldn't by law. And that if they saw him giving me those, because those basically so were going wasted. They can't even take them home. So basically you had these perfect, beautiful peaches, not beautiful, ugly, but perfectly sweet and juicy that were going wasted. And and a big part of the crop goes actually wasted at the at the very at the very source, which I find Really stupid, you know. It's um, yeah. besides of like shame, and you know, I don't want to be cliche, but people die of you know hunger. But mm -hmm. also, how silly it is not to really recognize that that mark sometimes is what makes it special. So, it's good and I think that this is in life too, you know, that. Maybe we should, we should do like a dumpster diving edition of the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> no but I'm talking about life, like. The, the, the beauty is not the, the canonic beauty that you know that we're told, and it's difficult to get out of that. Mm -hmm. like that. Clearly. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Don't you find that sometimes there are beautiful, perfectly beautiful human beings, according to the, what they told us is perfection, right? But they don't express passion or you're not attracted you can tell wow that's a perfect human being but there's no then they're not perfect sexiness or there's no passion or there's no and often i find that then that characteristic comes really. out of comes out of people that are not what it's been defined as the perfect beauty the perfect proportions or you know um if you're my age you were raised with barbie and barbies mm -hmm. who said you know but, but I think that unconsciously we were raised knowing that thin, blonde, and blue eyes and tall is what's beautiful and in straight hair. If you are anything other than that, you start having, you know, pretty early complex. Um, Napoleon anyway. complex, they call mm -hmm. it. Um, Can you imagine TMZ running photos of you all dumpster diving? <laughs> Oh, I did that when I lived in Seattle, my grudge days. Yeah, we got the most... 
because there was this um, chocolate factory that would have to dump it, and so we'd go in there and get these huge hunks of dark chocolate. Did you it was use, amazing. Did you use a snorkel or scuba gear? <laughs> yeah. Um, Tesoro, Chelsea had a question. Yeah. Is flatbread pizza or is it a different category, and how so? You know, it's actually different. Um, is it the dough? The dough is different. Ow. Really don't <laughs> uh oh, there's Your no time. time. Is up. <laughs> um, you know, how, the bell. how? First of all, it rises, it takes longer to rise. It takes short, like pizza takes longer to rise. Um, well, yeah, and I can just tell by the way you were doing pizza it with your fingers. Is, yeah, pizza, pizza has all the flour. Yeah, and... I think the pizza is a little thicker. Not, not the, the final result, the dough itself. Um, this is delicious. Okay. It's so, it, it, did you see how easy it was? Oh, well, you so didn't, easy. But you can really, I'll post the recipe and, you know, again, not my recipe, tell. Um, but let me get the, this one probably is almost ready. Mm. So yeah, that's, a, I, I think that they are very similar, but just like bread, you know, they make amazing bread from pizza dough. And so, look at that. So when actually I was working in a pizzeria when I was 15 and it was my first job, my father told me if you want to go buy stuff for yourself, just, you know, find a little weekend job. And we would, eat, there was, the, in the pizzerias in Italy, they serve bread made of pizza dough. So in a way, probably you can make pizza out of this, just yeah. like you can make bread out of pizza dough. And it's this, it's different, you know, it's not ciabatta bread, it's this soft and chewy bread, which is addictive. My local Trader Joe's gently trashes their waste so needy people can safely dumpster that. That's really sweet. I Too bad. That. They were a good one. <laughs> Too bad needy people have to dump a dive, yeah. True. And uh, we need true. to fix that in this country. Yes. Trader Joe's also gives a lot of food to the food bank. I saw somebody comment that. Also, you know what? Prêt de manger. Prêt de manger. At the end of the day, their stuff goes to the uh, people who need it. Do you want to like do something to make it smile? Oops. That's not <laughs> we wanted to do something prettier. Um, How do you say really... to sit, my love? Sedere, like but. Qua qualcuno vuole <laughs> sedere con papà alla scala. Uh, On the steps. Is that too much chocolate? Oh, so you don't want to have dessert? Okay. Never. No, I never have but, too much chocolate. You know, I, like I think they're on top of this. If you now we don't have the time, we're gonna just is really it, quickly it try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you can put whipped cream, uh, fresh strawberries. Um, yeah. You can really, deck, you know, you can, this is the base. I would say this is the base and you can get creative. Uh, Ice cream one? is good. We really have to, we don't have much time. Let's try it. Guys, well, since I won't have the time to really be all effusive with you. We need like to I get always, some sharp the scissors. I now. love you guys. Let's try this. This part doesn't have much honey, so I'll give you one that has more. Um, this has been really fun. Thank you, Kate. Thank for, you for having me. For okay. being here. It's so cool to have extra if, energy if you cook them longer will the uh, nuts stick on it better or do you use more honey ah it's hot <laughs> i have two minutes in two minutes guys we have to try this do we made it tea? and uh while we try it ah. why don't you cut the chocolate ah you guys yeah. tried then all right we'll try these one okay. we have to, i have to try this first sweetheart i'll be right there i will sit i will sit on the stairs with you as soon as i try oh, this no. Can I try it first? I'm curious about the, the right. orange. I'm going to try so this, this and then I'm going to sit on the steps. Hi, Katie! Hi, Catherine! Oh, we've got. Oh my god, the Manuka honey! Oh, look at the honey and chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's orange. Oh my god. Oh, it's honey and orange? You guys, mm -hmm. Manuka honey and oh, chocolate. I love because? it even more. This oh, does taste like floor. a Greek or like Turkish wow. pastry mm -hmm. thing. All oh. the honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Can I? And it's not just sweet. Wow, it's it. No, it's not too sweet, it's perfect. Catherine. Um, 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 um. It's all great. Wow. Mm -hmm. You want something too hot? Catherine, this is not for you. Come on. Elise, you want to give her this? She can try this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flat bread from Catherine. Thank you, guys. Oh, yes. Yeah. Guys, I love Hi, you. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Mm. Mm. Hi, Catherine. Oh, my God. Winner. Winner. We made it. Both. Winner. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. I will read all your comments. I promise. I, I, I know that I'm, I haven't read you all, but I promise I will read you all. This is so exciting because it's so delicious. Thank you. I loved it. I love you guys. Um, please I ask. Guys. I love you guys. 
As Hi, you know, guys. comment. I'll give you all the answers. Hi, That's guys. a very big statement, but I love you. Thank oh, you, thank no, you, thank no, you, thank no, you. No, no, no. Yeah, I will get uh, all the answers that I have. I'll share them with you. Flatbread winner. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the new ones. I love you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, man. Ciao, ciao.